Now, if we want to calculate the voltage due to some continuous charge distribution, we approach it in much the same way as calculating the electric field due to a continuous charge distribution. We break our continuous charge distribution up into lots of little bits and then we work out what each of those little bits contributes to the total voltage. So we work out dV for each of these small increments. Then we sum up the contributions from each of these small increments by integrating it. So let's have a look at how we could do this for a ring of charge if we wanted to work out the voltage at some point above the center of that ring. So this question asks us to derive an expression for the voltage at point P, a distance H above the center of a ring of charge with radius R and total charge Q. So how we approach these questions is to break our charge distributions up into little bits. So let's consider a little bit here with a length ds. And what we want to know is, well, how much does this little bit ds contribute to the voltage up here at p? So we can call that that little bit that it contributes dv. So we're trying to work out what dv is. Now to work out what dV is, we can consider that a single charged particle contributes to the voltage given by Kq divided by R. So this is what we'll want to use here. In this case we've got K and we'll assume that on dS there's some charge dQ, which we don't know yet, but we'll call it dQ, the charge on dS, and then we need to divide by R, which is the distance between our point and the point where the voltage is being measured. So I hope you can see this is a right angle triangle. We've got the length r here, the radius of the circle, and then the height h. So we can work out this distance using r squared plus h squared. So what we're going to need to do to progress is work out this, what this dq is. So to work out dq, we can consider what the linear charge density is. So we know we're told in the question that there's a total charge of q around this ring here. And so the linear charge density is given by Q divided by the length. And in this case, it's a circle. So we've got the circumference of the circle. So this will be our linear charge density. And then dQ is just going to be equal to the linear charge density times the little length that we're considering. So this will be equal to Q over 2 pi R times dS. And then we can substitute this in here. So we've got K times Q dS and then over 2 pi r times the square root of r squared plus h squared. So this tells us how much this little increment here contributes to the voltage up here. So to get the total voltage, we're going to need to sum all these little increments all the way around the circle. So we'll have v is equal to the integral of dv all the way around the circle. And so this is equal to the integral of kq ds times 2 pi r square root of r squared plus h squared. And then because we're going around the circle, we're going from s equals 0 all the way around and back one circumference. So we're going from 0 up to 2 pi r. Now, none of these things vary with lengths around our loop. So all of these things are just constants. So we can write this as kq over 2 pi r times r squared plus h squared, square root that, and then we've just got the integral of ds from 0 to 2 pi r, which when we integrate this, we're going to end up with 2 pi r minus 0, so just the 2 pi r. So this will be equal to kq times 2 pi r divided by 2 pi r times the square root of r squared plus h squared. So these will cancel out, and this will be equal to kq over the square root of r squared plus h squared. So that is our expression for the voltage at point P. Now it's always a good idea just to make sure that our answer makes sense in some limiting cases. So let's imagine that the radius goes to zero. So this ring is getting really, really small. As the ring gets really, really small, it should start to look like a point charge. So if we substitute r equals 0 in here, 
then we've got that the voltage is going to go to kq over the square root of h squared, which is kq over h, which is what we'd expect because we're now a height h above some tiny disk, so some point charge here, which and these two equations are the same with r being the distance we are, which is now h. So this is this behaves as we would expect the correct answer to behave.